Hello guys, my name is Richmond and I welcome you to the Restech channel. Recently, I released two videos in this channel where I spoke about how to program your EV3 robot to move forward and also backwards accurately using the gyro sensor. If you're a fan of EV3 and you missed those two particular videos, you can go and watch them because I have the links in the description below. You can go there and get those two videos, okay? Without wasting much time, let's move into today's tutorials. But before that, if you're a new viewer, just tap on the subscribe button and also if you get any benefits from this particular video you can leave a like as well um today we'll be talking about something really different something we don't talk about in this channel and um, we'll be talking about arduino microcontrollers okay and the specific microcontroller we'll be talking about is the arduino uno okay so i have an arduino uno microcontroller here so we are going to move into some of the components that makes up this particular Arduino Uno and their functions as well. So the first component I will talk about is the USB port we have here. This USB port is the port through which you upload your code onto the microcontroller. So after writing your code on your laptop or whatever you are using in programming, you connect your USB to the laptop and to this particular port and then you upload your code to it. Okay. The next thing I will talk about is the power supply port. This is the port through um, which you supply your Arduino Uno with power. Okay, and the Arduino Uno needs um, you know five volts to operate. Okay, but then it can withstand up to twenty volts also. The next thing I will talk about is the reset button we have on top of the USB port. Um, this reset button actually resets the code running on the microcontroller which means it brings the um, code to the beginning okay it starts um, running the code to the um, from the beginning the next thing i'll talk about is um the crystal oscillator okay this crystal oscillator takes 60 million times per second okay so in each second this crystal oscillator um, takes 16 million times okay so that is really great and in each take of this particular um, oscillator it performs a specific operation i mean one operation okay so for example it can perform either um, addition or subtraction in any of the ticks so that is what this particular crystal oscillator we have here and do is the ash thing behind the um, usb port okay okay so right on top of the crystal oscillator we have the usb interface okay so what this um uh, usb interface do is that um it transfers or translates the usb signals or signals from the usb into signals the arduino uno understands okay so basically if you are uploading anything onto this microcontroller it first passes through the you know usb interface to get the, that particular thing translated into the language this particular microcontroller understands okay the next thing we'll be talking about is the microchip and the microchip um this um uh, microcontroller use is 80 mega okay and also the microcontroller has a space of um 32 kilobytes okay so it can store up to 32 kilobytes code okay and also it has a ram space of two kilobytes okay so that is what this particular microcontroller has also someone will be thinking about these pins we have here the pins above and then the pins below here okay so let's start talking about these pins the set of pins i'll be talking about here first is the analog pins okay it's the one below here and they are six um, which start from zero to you know five and these analog pins actually read or um, you know take in analog signals as well as you know give out analog signals it's really simple to understand okay for so for example um sensors that actually give out analog readings such as the temperature sensor and um, maybe the water sensor can you know be connected to the analog pins of this particular microcontroller okay so this is the pins through which analog readings are read by the microcontroller okay and also um we have digital pins as well okay and the digital pins um at the other hand also takes in digital um 
inputs or digital outputs gives out digital outputs so these are the functions of the digital and then you know analog pins and also the digital pin starts from 0 to 13 so they are 14 in all so that is what you have to take note about the digital pins so aside these analog and digital pins you also have other pins on the microcontroller we have the reset pin here which also resets the whole board or the code running on the um, board which is um, begins the code um, running on the microcontroller and the next pin i'll be talking about is 3.3 um, vote pin and um, this particular pin supplies components that don't need five volts you know power supply to work or to function properly um, power okay so some components such as the um, RFID reader which I have some here this is an RFID reader this RFID reader um, really needs 3.3 um, volts to print perfectly or well okay so it doesn't need more than even though sometimes it will work but then it doesn't need more than the 3.3 volts to operate on the other hand we have the 5 volts pin here so some components also need the 5 volts and this microcontroller can also supply them with the 5 volts from the 5 volts um, pin so from the 5 volts we also have the ground terminals the ground terminals are basically three two of them are here and then the other one is on top um with the digital pins okay so what this ground terminal or ground pin um does is just to give the ground terminals to the components connected to this microcontroller and also if you want to supply currents to the microcontroller without using the power port you can use the ground pin and also the v in pin okay as well so basically these are the components we have from the Arduino Uno microcontroller okay so I have other components that work hand in hand with the microcontroller to build projects okay so for instance if you want to build a project like um, an automatic dustbin which is a dustbin which opens when it senses obstacle or senses someone approaching it okay so you will need components such as the ultrasonic sensor which measures distance and also several motors which can actually open the dust when or when the you know ultrasonic sensor senses the um, you know obstacles so i have some components here which i'll be showing you um and i'll tell you whether the, the component is an output device or an input device and even based on their function you would be able to determine if it's an input device or an output device okay so the first component i have here is the lcd display liquid crystal display so with this display something that displays something <laughs> you should know the function okay it's an output device okay so this also helps to display what's going on in the microcontroller or what you want it to display okay so you can program the microcontroller to make this particular lcd display display a particular thing or show something else okay we also have the rfid reader this um, is a reader okay so you should know it's a sensor it reads codes from the rfid card and sends them to the uh, microcontroller board okay you also have a joystick over here okay so people who are fan of games will know this better <laughs> just like me okay so this is the joystick and the joysticks also um, serve as an input device it sends information to the microcontroller okay and i have one last uh, okay last but one this is a stepper motor okay this is a stepper motor and um as its name goes motor so it's you know rotates and then do actions so this is basically an output device um when i'm to classify or group it under input or output this is an output device it doesn't give any input to the microcontroller but then takes output from the microcontroller to perform an action okay so that is it for that and the last component i have here is the water sensor okay so the water sensor basically sends information to the microcontroller as to which um, state it is either sensing water or not sensing water okay so this is a water sensor 
so yeah basically this is all what we need to know about the arduino uno or arduino microcontrollers and you know some outputs and inputs stuff about the arduino uno or the arduino microcontrollers in general okay in my next video i'll be talking about other stuff pertaining to the arduino microcontroller how to program it and you know how to go about building projects with this particular microcontroller so yeah this is the end of this particular video and if you also had benefits from the video and if you learned something new you can just leave a like to impress me so that i do more videos of this kind in this channel thank you very much